In this video, we're going to be going over the three scan that you absolutely need if you're going to be an intraday trader or also called a day trader. So as usual, all the best tools will be linked in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get right in. So as I mentioned in the intro of this video, we're going to be going over the most important scan. And if you're going to be an intraday trader, of course, you need a gap scan. So I'll talk about my setting in trading view because there's a couple of things that if you do wrong, you might actually not see all the stocks that you should. So let's dive in. So as you can see over here, we do have my filters and there's one thing that I want to go over and make sure you don't skip is the gap over here. So there's a couple of things you can do if we remove this and then we go back to the filters, you can go to gap and then you have pre-market gap percentage and also gap percentage. Really important that you choose gap percentage. And the reason why is when you're choosing the pre-market gap, percentage, what it's going to do is only going to show you the pre-market stock that are gapping. So if you're looking for stock in the morning that are gapping up technically, but they gapped up in the after hour, it's not going to show you these stock. So it's a big problem because sometimes stock do have news in the after hour and have a big run and you're not going to be able to see them. So here's how you fix this is you just put gap percentage and instead of having multiple filters for gap scanner, what I do over here is go into manual setup. Then I go over here at outside and then I put minus two or minus four to four percent. So it's just going to show me everything that's outside of these percentages. So you can see we don't see the minus one, minus two. We only see the top gappers and also the top loser. So instead of having multiple scan, as I mentioned, just one scan is going to do your gap up and also your gap down. The other filter I have is just a price. So to anything that's above 20 cents, below 20 cents is just not useful for me. Volume 750K, I really like to, to trade stock with high volume pre-market. This is just a personal thing. You can lower it, but I think if you're a new trader looking for more volume, it's mostly going to be beneficial for you. And also exchange. I don't want to see anything that's OTC. So I go to exchange manual setup and I choose NYC, NASDAQ and Amex. And then I also um, don't necessarily put pre-market volume, but I had to put it to show you guys today because it's currently 2.40 p.m. on a Friday. If I don't put this, what's going to happen is you're going to see all the stock that have volume right now during the day. But most of the time um, you can just put volume normally. If you have any issue with that, just put pre-market volume and it's going to be fine. And that's pretty much what I have. And then what I do is really look by gap percentage, volume, average volume 10 day. And this is important. And the reason why is if something is trading, um, let's say in the pre-market, we'll put back pre-market volume. And what you can see um, over here, we'll add it over here. Also pre-market, it's going to be volume right over here. And then we'll just put it here. So sometimes you see that the pre-market vol on this one, it was even bigger than the average 10 day. But sometimes if you look at a bigger market cap, it's going to show you a more significant thing. So for example, a stock that trades an average of 5 million shares a day, like example, uh, JP Morgan, but then there's news on it and it's already traded 2 million shares pre-market. So in the pre-market, you can see how in play this stock really is. It already traded 50% of its average volume and it's a real company. So this is going to be significant for that stock. That means a lot of people are going to be into uh, what's going on with this name because it's doing something above normal. Sorry for the interruption, but as usual, if you enjoyed the video so far, like and subscribe. I also did link all the best tools for day trading in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get back to the video. And then I also have market cap. I personally don't filter with market cap, but you could if you want using this over here and security info, and it's going to be market capitalization right over here. And then you can add one if you want, but I personally don't because it's important for me to just see everything that's going on. And then I have to filter what's in play for me. So now let's move on to the second intraday scan that I think it's really important that you have. And this one is going to be for weak stock. So I won't change anything here. And then what I have is because I'm looking for this particular filter to be a short selling filter, what I do is I put a price of at least 50 cents. This could be higher most of the time, 
uh, because shorting anything around 50 cent don't have that much potential in my opinion. Sometimes I just want to see if some crazy uh, small cap is really doing a, a lot of volume. I just want to see it in case. Then I have change minus 2%, volume minus uh, volume 5 million, and then relative volume at least one. And I also want the price to be below VWAP. So I'll show you what I want this filter to show me. And then I'll explain back what I have in terms of filters to make it make sense. So this example, we have NKLA. This was yesterday. If you want to go back to this date, it was the 11th of April. So you can see that the stock closed at 97 cents. We had a gap down. And after that, we can see the stock opened really weak. I didn't have it on radar, but you can see the stock is really in play because it's trading a lot more volume than the previous day, as you can see. And if you don't have maybe a filter for that, you might miss it because you only look at gap up and sometimes gap downs are also a good opportunity. So in this scenario that we have over here, this is going to show me a stock that's gapping down and it's also, you know, a weak and it's going to be below or at VWAP. And after that, I can see if there's a setup for me, an ideal setup would have been a break of that range over here and then maybe a short versus that level. So this, what I have is going to be important. So I have price uh, below or equal VWAP one day. So your, my pink line over here is VWAP. It's going to show me that it's weak. And after that, I have price above 50 cent, change minus 2%, volume 5 million, relative volume. And this, sometimes I play with it and I don't. I have open change, change from open, and then I'll put also something very little so i'll go below and then i'll put minus one percent the reason why you might want to add this to your filter is because sometimes a stock is gapping down but then it's maybe down 10 percent from the previous day but in today it's not going to be weak so that means it's just gapping down and then it's it's rallying and this is not the setup i'm looking for i'm looking for a weak stock that stays weak so i'm looking for continuation a gap down and then weakness so that means how can i find this it's going to be below vwap it's going to be below the open price and it's going to be uh, weak from the previous day so this is how i would find it and this filter would help me do that so price change volume relative volume this i don't put it too high because when stock go down they don't need a really big relative volume versus when a stock is going up and then you know you have all your filters over here and then what I do look for mostly, it's going to be filtered by volume. I'll go descending and then I can just click and see what I have in terms of chart. And also uh, Rivian yesterday would have been a good one, um, but there would be probably no entry for me. If you want to link also your scanner to your chart, you just need to select over here a color and also select a color over here and it's going to be linked. So you can actually just click like this and filter what, it, what you have. So if we bring this to today, uh, we can see it's going to show you a couple examples. There was also Rivian. It would have maybe showed me this over here so I can catch a bit of a short in terms of momentum because I can see relative volume, good amount of volume. It's weak. It's in play. JP Morgan had some news on it. It's down. It's staying below VWAP, below the open price. Maybe there's a trade, maybe there's not. It's not going to show you trade every day, but at least I can see if something is really down or really up. So let's move on to the last one, but I think it's the best one. So definitely stay tuned for this. What we have over here is my open change percent scanner. What it is, is going to find me the stock that are open from the opening price the most and also down. Why is this important? It's because sometimes something is gapping up, as I mentioned before but it's not really doing anything. This is going to find me the stock that are really up on the open or really, really down. And these are gonna be normally stock with high volume. So we can see this one is up the most. Maybe someone wanna do a mean reversion trade, not my style, but maybe there's this. Then you also have the old sector that's running quite a bit. And then, you know, there's, there's gonna be multiple names that are gonna be just the most in play. So I have a relative volume of two. So I want to see really the crazy stock, some stock that have are, are doing something very unusual. And then after that, I need volume to be at least 5 million. I want something that's trading a lot of volume. Change from open, minus 10 or 10. And I did the same thing over here. So instead of having 15 different filters, 
I put everything in one. So outside minus 10 or 10%, volatility at least 5%, price above 20 cents. And this is really one of the best filter that I have. It's always gonna just tell me what's the most in play, what are people actually trading? And it's gonna be right here. And what I would recommend anyone, it's to also adapt these filter to the category of stock that they trade. If you're trading mega cap, these filters are gonna be really, really bad for you. You want you wanna consider something that's outside the norm of the type of stock that you trade. For me, small cap or high momentum stock, this is a possibility and these are gonna be the filter that I'm really looking for. I don't really look by just change from previous close because I'll have this from my gap scan. I really look for open change and stuff like that or just something that's really volatile or trading a lot of volume. And to customize something like this, I would just go over here. I would remove all of this, remove, and then I could remove also relative volume or just leave it like that. And then I would just filter by relative volume or even just volume in general. And it would tell me, you know, all of these stocks that are in play and then I can just click and see what's happening on these names and why they're running. And talking about stocks that are actually running, yesterday would have been a good example. A stock that's also gapping down, it's actually weak. And then, you know, we're below VWAP, maybe a short below that level. And this was a crazy move. So I hope you enjoyed these filters. I hope you're able to generate income from them. As usual, thanks for watching. Peace.